Coming up on today's edition of Locked On Eagles, Eagles players report to training camp today. Happy start of football season, Eagles fans across the globe. I want to get into some talk about injuries and a mailbag portion of the show. Where we're going to hear from you, the listeners. What are your biggest questions heading into camp 2022 edition? This is Louis DiBiase from Locked On Eagles. Let's get this thing started. You are Locked On Eagles. Your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. Welcome in, Eagles fans, to a Tuesday edition of the show, episode two this week of five. Download it into your phone wherever you get the podcast free and available on all platforms and on YouTube as well. Follow us on Twitter at Lockdown Birds and at DBASI LOE. I'm so excited for today's show because today's podcast is the start of the 2022 season. For me, for Gino, for Eagles fans, for the entire NFL, because now all veteran players across the league have officially reported to training camp, including the Eagles at the NovaCare Complex down in South Philadelphia. We get to see Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, an elite offensive line, Miles Sanders, a brand new looking defense. We're going to see Nick Sirianni and Jonathan Gannon try to put all of this together and have this 22 2022 team on paper reach their ultimate ceiling that they are capable of. And we've seen a lot of hype around this team this offseason. We're going to see it all being put together right now on the field starting today. Although today, players do report. Technically, practice does not start, though, until tomorrow afternoon. And it's interesting. that I was thinking about this the other day. I like to compare the current state of the Eagles compared to the past. You guys know this. You'll listen to me five times a week, most of you, so you know. That part of me is just always going to show during the podcast. And I was thinking just like, you know, post-2017, everything to me is like, you know, BC, AD. It's kind of like that with the Eagles before Super Bowl 52 um, and after Super Bowl 52. 2018, 2019, 2020, even 2020, 2021 to a degree, you know, there was a lot of hype for the Eagles in some of those off seasons. But you know what I did feel like we talked about a lot that we really haven't brought up much of, if not at all, at least on this podcast over the last few months, when we preview training camp has been, we just need this team to get through July and August healthy and at full strength for the start of the season. That's going to be most important, not how Jordan Davis fits into the defense now and Kazir White and Hassan Riddick and looking at the chemistry gelling between A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and Jalen Hurts and the massive question mark about quarterback. Even that wasn't a question back then because we knew Carson Wentz was going to be the quarterback moving forward. The big thing we always talked about was this team just needs to focus on staying healthy, getting into the season with all 22 of your starters, because it felt like in 2018, 2019, 2020, not as much last year, but the previous three seasons, this team was always limping. You know, they were limping to the finish line to end the season, somehow pulled off these miracle runs at the end to make the playoffs, despite injuries, a catastrophic amount at every spot, key starters, role players, you name it. Everybody got hurt at least once or twice during those three seasons after the Super Bowl where they're trying to maximize that championship window, right? But it wasn't just that they were limping to the finish line. A lot of the time, and especially heading into the 2020 season, this was the case. You look at injuries to Lane Johnson and Andre Dillard on the offensive line. They were limping out of the gate. They so many times in past off seasons, We're dealing with so many injuries in the summer. So that's the one thing that I actually noticed today when I'm like, all right, what else? I mean, because it feels like we've hit on every point there is to hit on before training camp starts. Like, what else can we preview today? And I'm like, what haven't I thought of yet? And I'm like, injuries. I have not thought of just getting this team to Detroit healthy. And that's an awesome sign. That shows that, you know, knock on wood, man. I really hope I don't jinx this. But it feels like we're over that hill and greener pastures are moving forward when it comes to the health of this football team. 
And I think 2021 proved that. You know, yes, Jalen Hurts was banged up last year a little bit. And, you know, they did lose Lane Johnson. That wasn't to injury, though. It was more, you know, for the mental health situation at the beginning of the season. Dallas Goddard was banged up. Miles Sanders. You know, they did have some key injuries to, you know, multiple players. Brandon Graham, of course, tore his Achilles uh, at the beginning of the season. The Liz Frank injury to Isaac Samalu. So, you know, they actually did have a number of, you know, pretty substantial injuries. But for the most part, I mean, Dallas Goddard came back. Miles Sanders came back. Sam Alu and Graham were really the only two guys that you lost for a long period of time. And this team was able to be healthy down the stretch of the season. That's how a huge part of how they were able to get to 7-2 and two and make the playoffs despite a 2-5 and five start. That was not the case the previous three seasons. This team was limping out of the gate and they were limping to the finish line. And you can pinpoint why the Eagles suffered so many injuries. A lot of it had to do with age, you know, the medical staff. There was a lot of suspect things going on with decision-making, with how to rehab players, you know, Jordan Howard's stinger injury, if you will. Deshaun Jackson, the advice he got in 2019 with that lower abdomen injury where he came back. He never got the surgery. Comes back against Chicago, two plays in. You know, he was nursing that for six weeks. Boom, suffers an injury, and he's out long-term. The Eagles felt like switched their medical staff, major positions in that part of the organization over and over again to try to solve this plague that was football injuries to their roster. So, you know, you can point to the medical staff. You can point to the age of this group. The Eagles from 2017 to 2020 were one of the most old rosters across the league. But at the same time, it's like it wasn't just older players that were getting injured. It was the young players. It was the guys in their prime. The injuries were random. Sometimes it didn't even feel like there was a real trend to them. That wasn't all soft tissue injuries, which, of course, you know, when you see guys like Sam Bradford and Sidney Jones, there's a direct correlation to repeating those injuries over and over again. Once you suffer one, it's more likely that you're going to suffer another. But these injuries were all, a lot of them were unique, and they're just it didn't feel, it felt like a curse, to be honest with you. It felt like the Eagles just were destined to be beaten up in that era of Eagles football. So the fact that I'm not going into a training camp, just like nervous to follow along with the beat reporters day after day and just say, oh, just get through. I don't want to hear any injuries. Like Jason Kelsey just limped into the, into the medical tent, right? The biggest enemy of the Eagles for three years was that big blue medical tent on the sideline at the link. The fact that I'm actually excited to be like, no, I want to hear about how they're using A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Quez Watkins. Who's playing in the slot versus, you know, the Z and the X on the outside? Like, how are they using these linebackers? What do the schemes look like on defense? Are they using more even or odd fronts to start camp? The fact that I'm excited about that and not dreading this summer for the Eagles, even though I had optimism in 2018, 2019, and 2020, and they gave me reasons to be optimistic, because they found a way to overcome those injuries time after time, until 2020, of course, you still went in with a nervous stomach because you didn't trust this team to be at full strength to start the year and to reach that potential that they had then and they have now. I think this team is a lot younger now. That's a huge reason I don't think we fear injuries as much. But overall, it feels like the medical staff has things more under control I don't. I don't know what it is. Again, I do think the youth of the roster is the major part, the strength of this team on both sides of the football. They definitely have gotten much younger over the last two off seasons. Age itself is the primary reason, but it just feels like that curse, at least over the last two years, and again, knock on wood, but it does feel like that catastrophic amount of injuries is in the past. Hopefully, I didn't just jinx it, and we don't see the names start to pile up, but I mean, you guys all remember the injury reports that showed up week after week. It was a giant grocery list. I mean, the laundry list of players, it was the entire starting lineup at times. It was almost comical. It felt like you were being punked. And it's great to know heading into camp, I trust this team to be healthy. That's one of the huge things we haven't talked about that's going to help this team reach their ceiling. Yeah, it's going to be Jalen Hurts taking that step and Jonathan Gannon using these defensive pieces the right way and Nick Sirianni continuing to grow in his second year as head coach and Howie Roseman continuing to make the right moves and hopefully all these rookies and young players continue to take steps. That's all going to help you reach a ceiling that could be a top team in the NFC, but staying healthy is one of the big ones that a lot of us haven't talked about because it which is great. It almost feels like we're assuming they're going to be healthy. 
And that was not the case for a long time. So that feels really damn good. So guys, I want to hear from you though. What's on your mind heading into camp as Eagles players officially report today at the NovaCare Complex? We're going to get into that coming up next right here on Locked on Eagles. But first, a shout out to one of our sponsors of the show, and it's Dave. Level with me here, Eagles fans, for a minute. We've all been in a situation at some point in our lives when we're a little tight on cash, right? Maybe you could only afford to put a few gallons of gas in your tank, or you got another save the date, and you're wondering how you're going to pay for that next wedding gift. I have a bunch of them coming up this summer, and you might be living paycheck to paycheck and struggling to make ends meet, right? And you just need to pay bills. It can be really stressful when unexpected expenses do come up. Now Dave can help you get out of a pinch when you really need it. Hindsight is 2020, and you can't change the past, but what if you could get a little help from your future self? Maybe you'd ask to borrow a little cash. Now you can with Dave. It's a banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief that they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, Download the Dave app and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app today from the App Store. That's Dave, D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. Future you is going to thank you with Dave. All right, Eagles fans, welcome back into this Tuesday edition of Locked On Eagles. It's the first edition of the podcast during the 2022 season. We've had the offseason from January up until yesterday, but Eagles players officially reported to camp today at the NovaCare Complex, and that, to me, is the official start of football season for 2022. I want to get into now, because camp is starting, and you've heard so much about what me and Gino were looking into at training camp, what players were watching, what starting position battles we're looking at, and what battles to make the roster we're watching too, the the depth players that are on the bubble, and talking about Jalen Hurts and our belief in Nick Sirianni, Jonathan Gannon, right, injuries, everything that you could talk about, right, the new additions, how they're going to fit in as well. I want to hear now, though, from our listeners, What are you guys thinking heading into training camp? And it's highly anticipated with the upside that this Eagles team does present coming up in this regular season. So I want to hear from you guys and the listeners. And although you may be listening to the show and didn't get your question in, we'll still answer them on Twitter. So make sure you follow us at Lockdown Birds. My Twitter is at DBLCLOE, L-O-E. And my co-host, Gino Camilleri, he's on Twitter at GC24 underscore football. I want to start with my main man. This is my guy. And uh, he's one of our listeners that's been with us since really the start back in 2018. And it's Lawrence who writes in at Uncommon Curtis on Twitter. I love this question. And I'm sure he's been listening to us before talking about this topic. Lawrence writes in with all this talk about Jalen Hurts second year in the system. First time he's had that. I think in his entire career, both college and the pros, if I'm not mistaken, his second time in the same system in back-to-back years. Lawrence writes in, does that mean they'll commit to throwing now no matter what? How bad it may look sometimes they still decide to throw, or will they just do what works when things look shaky? Of course, this is a good question to ask because you look at last year, the Eagles threw more than most teams in the NFL in the first half of the season. That second game against Dallas, what, Miles Sanders got I think two carries, both in the first quarter, and then the Eagles threw the ball like 40 to 50 times because the the leash on Hurts was short. They had two first-round picks, three actually, in 2021. They wanted to find out if Jalen Hurts was their quarterback. They wanted to fast-forward that process because they're not going to give Hurts three, four, five years like they would a first or second overall pick. Now we know that he's going to get another season because of what he showed down the stretch to help this team make the playoffs. But they threw the football a lot to start with a long-term objective in mind to find out, can Jalen Hurts be a quarterback in the style of offense we want, which is pass heavy, because that's the way we think you win long-term. That's how you sustain long-term success is through your quarterback throwing the football. You're a pass heavy offense. You pass to get the lead and then you run to keep it. Whether that's with your mobile quarterback and hurts your running backs, you pass to get the lead, you run to keep it. That's the Eagles philosophy 
always has been. I think as long as Jeffrey Lurie is the owner and Howie Roseman is the GM, that's how it always will be as well. We know now, though, that, you know, that was sink or swim time for Hertz in that style of offense, and he sank. The team was not good. They were 2-5. and five. He could not handle that kind of load. Wasn't just on Jalen, though. The receivers weren't good enough for that kind of volume either. They didn't have A.J. Brown. They had Devontae Smith, but Jalen Rager was one of the worst receivers in football last year. That was a consistent starter through 17 games. Dallas Goddard got banged up a lot. They had no balance at all. And even though I want to be a pass-heavy attack, you have to have a run pass balance. You know, I'm not asking for an 80 to 20 run to pass ratio like they had, it felt like at the start of the year. I want it to be 60 40 in favor of the pass, not 52, you know, 48 like it was last year in favor of the run. But there was no balance. Hertz didn't have the weapons, I think, to maximize that kind of style. And he also just wasn't that player yet. Still not sure if he's going to be. But Nick Sirianni in the second half said, that's not who we are. If I'm going to save this season, I got to do what we can do best right now, not what we want to do long-term. They became the most run-heavy team in football. They ended the season as the number one rushing unit in the NFL, and that helped them go 7-2 and two and make the playoffs. Will they do that again this year? That's the question. They don't want to. Again, although it didn't work the first half of the season, that is the team the Eagles want to be. That is why you invest so many draft picks at wide receiver. If you don't want to be that team, if you want to be what you were last year or a Baltimore Ravens-like offense, you don't invest a first-round pick in Jalen Rager. Before that, a second-round pick in J.J. Ortega-Whiteside, a second-round pick in Dallas Goddard, a first-round pick you trade up for Andre Dillard, who was seen as maybe the best pass-protecting left tackle coming out of the 2019 NFL draft. And then when those things don't work, you go back again and you try again. You take Devontae Smith in the first round. You trade a first-round pick and you give $100 million to A.J. Brown. Right, You don't make all those moves if and collect extra first-round picks potentially to get a new quarterback, and you call about Russell Wilson and even Deshaun Watson. I mean, this team might have been willing to sell their soul to get an elite quarterback like Deshaun Watson, despite what potentially a disgusting human being he is outside of the field. So they don't want to be what they were last year. That is why they have made the moves that they have made. But as Lauren said, if they come out and they're not passing well, like the start of the 2021 season, yes, I think that they will become what they were last year. Maybe to a lesser extent, because I think there will be a certain floor with this passing attack, just because you have A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard, Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins. Like they can't be one of the worst passing units. Jalen Hurts wasn't that bad as a passer last year. I think the, it, it won't be 52-48, but yeah, they'll become more of a run-centric offense again, especially when you have the best run-blocking offensive line in football and you have what was last year the most efficient based on DVOA and earned points average when it comes to his running impact. Jalen Hurts was the best mobile quarterback in football last year. Yeah, you're going to become a run-centric team. The long-term approach has to be maintained if you're a general manager. And Nick Sirianni has a long-term approach too. Like He wants to be a passing offense as well, but he always has to, and I said this on the show the other day, he always has to prioritize the short term. You know, he can't say, this is what we want to be, so we're going to throw no matter what the result is this year. This is who we are, and we're not going to change that. I don't like that my way or the highway, you know, kind of approach. You're going to fit into what I want, even if it's what I want to, as Louis DiBiase, not Nick Sirianni. You have to do what's best for your roster. Of course, though, then the next offseason – because you don't want to be that team, you had to be that in 2021 and maybe 2022 to get the most out of that season and give yourself a fighting chance. But I'll tell you what, they're gonna, that doesn't mean they're going to stop and just embrace, well, you know, this is what we have. We're a running team, so we're just going to build everything around that. No, they're going to make extreme moves in the 2023 offseason to make sure that they don't have to do that again. That's why they have those first-round picks next year in a quarterback-heavy draft. So I think they would, yes, Lawrence, I think they would go back to that philosophy they had last year, but I don't think they want to. And if they have to, you're going to see a lot of moves being made next offseason. Great question. Keep them coming. Really like that one to start off our mailbag. On this Tuesday edition of Locked On Eagles, here's a good one as well from our boy Quentin on Twitter, who's a Quez Watkins stand, it looks like. Hell yeah, man. Quez Watkins is my boy. Do you sign Jordan Howard again at running back before the 2022 regular season starts? 
This is a good question. Jordan Howard last year, the second half of the season, was really good for this football team. He provided a physical element that they needed, especially becoming a run-heavy team the second half of the year with Miles Sanders banged up. You don't want to give Boston Scott a heavy workload, not with his size. I like what Scott presents as a runner in between the tackles. Same with Kenneth Gainwell. I, I think Gainwell is a lot better in that way than people really think. And I show, I think he showed that last year with his success in the red zone, scoring touchdowns, just as an overall runner. I know he played a lot of receiver at Memphis, and you're going to want to use him in many different ways, especially this year. But, you know, he was good in that way. But I digress. Jordan Howard, though, was needed because neither one of those guys, Gainwell or Scott, were a featured back. So you wanted to run a committee when Sanders was, uh, was out. And when, you know, you run a team down, with Scott, Gainwell, and Jalen Hurts as well. And then they have to go out and tackle a big guy like Jordan Howard. That's tough. I get the physical element of why teams and why fans like having that kind of guy in the backfield. I mean, we saw the benefit when a defense had to tackle Garrett Blunt, and then they had to tackle Jay Ajayi. That wears a team down, absolutely. And maybe they do. Jordan Howard would be super cheap, and he's hasn't been good anywhere else. I mean, you saw how bad he was in Miami in 2019 or 2020. but Every time he's been in Philadelphia, he's been good behind that offensive line. He takes what the offensive line, excuse me, gives him, and, you know, he doesn't look back. So I would be okay with bringing him back, but I'm not, like, dying to bring back Howard. I'm not dying to have that physical running back on this team. I see the benefits, but it's not a necessity. It could be a preference for your committee, but it's not a necessity. I think Miles Sanders, the steps he took last year as a runner in between the tackles, especially the second half of the season, makes me want to make him the belt cow again this year especially if he's in a contract year and if you don't plan to re-sign him philly's going to use him up so I, I want miles sanders to be featured heavily in that run attack and i think kenneth gainwell and boston scott again like i said they showed that they can spell sanders and be very effective as runners behind this offensive line yeah neither one of those three running backs are big but with the rotation you're going to keep them healthier you know, although Sanders has to show he can stay healthy, but, you know, over usage is not going to be why one of these guys gets hurt. And they've all shown that they can be great in between the tackles. You don't need to have a, a giant running back to be an effective power running team. So I think Sanders, Gainwell, and Scott, they're good enough. Now, if you have injuries, it's good to know you have Jordan Howard in your back pocket whenever you want. And if they do sign him and he has a spot on this 53-man roster, and that's your four running backs again, I'm cool with that. I just don't think you have to have that player. I don't think you have to bring jo Jordan Howard in this year. I think I'm very happy with Sanders. I think Gainwell is going to take a big step this year. And, of course, Boston Scott has shown that he's always reliable, especially in clutch situations. I mean, Scott has shown he's one of the most clutch eagles of the past four years. But it's an interesting question. I think they're good for now, but it's good to know they always have Jordan Howard in their back pocket. And then we'll wrap up the show with another question here in our mailbag. And it's from Andrew, who writes in on Twitter, which Eagles young player that isn't a rookie? So no, you know, Jordan Davis, no Cam Jurgens, no N'Kobe Dean, Carson Strong, uh, you know, those players, Grant Calcaterra. Which young Eagle second, third year are you most excited to watch in 2022, especially at training camp? I specifically, I mentioned Kenneth Gainwell, very excited to see Gainwell in year two. So efficient last year, you know, seven touchdowns, including the playoffs, you know, over 500 yards from scrimmage was effective in the passing game and the running game. Despite, by the way, he did all of that. And he posted those numbers as a rookie, despite being a healthy scratch a lot of the time, because when Miles Sanders went down and this team went run heavy, they preferred Boston Scott and Jordan Howard. So Kenneth Gainwell still had those numbers last year, despite being in and out of the lineup in the second half of the season. That shows how efficient he was. And I don't even think they totally utilize his versatility. I want to see him more with jet sweeps, pre-snap motion, having him line up in the slot at times. He's a running back that was one of the best receiving backs in the draft two years ago coming out of Memphis. He played a lot of receiver at Memphis. If you watch his route running, he looks like, not only because he's number 14 out there, but he looks like a receiver running those routes. There's times you know a running back is out there. They can still be effective in the running game. Like, you see Miles Sanders. He's an effective receiving back. But you know when that's a running back out there in the open field. Kenneth Gainwell, the way he creates separation with his route running, sometimes he can look like a receiver. I don't even think they've reached, they've scratched the surface with what Gainwell can do. And if you want to see if he can potentially be the heir apparent to Sanders 
next year, if you don't want to give Sanders a contract extension, you're going to want to use Gainwell more. So I'm very excited to see how they use Kenneth Gainwell. Also because of fantasy, I'm very interested to see how they use the running backs. Um, you know, is it by committee or, you know, snaps and touches wise, who does lead this team? And I, I think Quez Watkins, the other guy, I think it's those secondary role players on offense. I'm just excited to see what kind of role they have this year. I don't think the touches are going to increase for Quez. I think they will for Gainwell, you know, when you combine carries and receptions. But for Quez, I think the efficiency, Quez Watkins' efficiency is going to go through the roof this year. A lot of those deep balls that Jalen Hurts didn't see him on last year, I think there's going to be an added emphasis on giving Quez more chances down the field to make plays like he did against the 49ers. I mean, more screen passes. You've seen multiple screens in the preseason and in the 2020 regular season that it feels like every time, and like against Dallas to end the season, against Atlanta, feels like every time Quez Watkins touches the ball, not just deep down the field, but the screen game and over the middle, he can take a five-yard play and make it a 50-yard touchdown or a 10-yard route and turn it into a 70-yard bomb. You know what I mean? So Quez Watkins, I think the efficiency now with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Scott all together and that running attack, I think you're going to see his looks be way more efficient than they were last year. Again, I don't think his touches are really his receptions are going to go up, but I think his yardage is going to go up. I think he's going to be over 700 yards. I think yards per reception, you know, he was up there amongst the best in the NFL last year, but I think it's going to be even better this year. I think his 20 plus yard plays are going to increase. So I'm really excited to see how they use Quez Watkins this year and Kenneth Gainwell. Not to mention Watkins just overall is a more polished receiver than he gets credit for. Sometimes receivers that are seen as deep threats, that's all people focus on. And they just say, that's a great deep threat. But Quez Watkins overall is a great receiver. He had the highest catch rate of any receiver last year, the lowest drop rate of an Eagles receiver. He had the highest contested catch rate as well. You know, he can go up and high point the football. We've seen that since Southern Miss. He's an exciting player. If you want a fun jersey to get, and you're a fan that doesn't like the popular Jalen Hurts jersey or Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Brandon Graham, get you a 16 Quez Watkins, maybe in black. That'd be really cool. I think Quez Watkins and Gainwell are the two guys that I'm really most excited to watch in 2022, starting with training camp tomorrow. The first practice is tomorrow afternoon. We've got you covered Monday through Friday on all things Eagles camp right here on your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, Locked on Eagles. Subscribe to the show wherever you get the podcast, free and available on all platforms and in video form as well on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Get your questions in. I'll still answer them on Twitter at Locked on Birds and at DiBiase L-O-E. Thank you so much for making Locked on Eagles your first listen today. And each and every day, make sure your second listen is the Locked On NFL podcast. All the news across the league. Camp is starting for every team. It's free and available. Locked On NFL. The Locked On NFL podcast on all platforms and on YouTube. As always, thank you for downloading Locked On Eagles. Thank you for listening and watching. And let's go, Birds.